Aquamarine. Indigo Aquamarine was is able to gather water. She's the elemental of water. Uh, Taylor is the elemental of water, and she's able to gather water from the atmosphere and from the the dew on the ground and so forth, and from clouds, because clouds are water. And she's able to gather them to herself and sort of create a, a spinning typhoon which launches along. But uh, what, whereas Gaia can travel over the ground using plant power and things, she can't travel too quickly. So she was she climbed onto the back of Indigo Aquamarine and they chased after a nuclear weapon going south. And they chased it as quickly as they could and dealt with it as quickly as they could. Essentially, it got about 10 kilometers away from them before they managed to catch it. And she managed to freeze it in place with some ice and lower it down carefully to the ground. That's how... And then after that, just to be safe, Gaia covered it over with heaps of soil turned into shrubbery to keep it well under control in case anything would happen. <clears throat> Sun power... Daniel had the energy from the sun and he used it in a similar way, chasing his nuclear weapon, which was going towards Adelaide. Luna Goddess used gravity and her nuclear weapon was heading towards Sydney. She managed to chase it down and to stop the nuclear weapon before it reached its place. She was successful too. <sighs> Magmatic Star Hurler used Star Flame and her weapon was headed towards Perth and she coped with the job as well. Mrs. Andromeda, using his weapon, using his power, was able to chase down his weapon, which was headed to Brisbane, and he prevented it from doing the damage. Each of them succeeded in fending off their nuclear weapons. All six of them. And it was Blue Zap. It was chasing down the final nuclear device and it wasn't exactly the most skilled at going quickly yet. Down on the ground, Shrieking Magpie and Peter Grimefire had used nitroglycerin on their motorcycles to burst along and they reached Delicate pretty quick and they called the military in Canberra. Throughout the ACT, sirens word and there was choppers going up into the air pretty quickly to wait on the nuclear weapon spinning forth. It was pretty tense, and Blue Zap did as well as he could, but wasn't able to catch the nuke terribly quickly. It was going to be disastrous by the looks of it. But with his strength, come on, Zap, he said, gotta, gotta do this. He managed to take the nuclear weapon pushed it upward into space. And way up in space, above Canberra, it exploded because the electrical zaps of his blue light energy finally made it explode. There was a bit of fallout for a few days later. A little bit of it, but it wasn't too problematic. Australia was on high alert and dealt with it as quickly as possible. As much as they could anyway. But when they, uh, the military and ASIO and so forth, went down to find the compound, 
Balthazar, the high priest Balthazar and his henchmen were long gone, and everything was stripped of anything at all resembling the presence of Illuminati. They simply could not really prove that they were involved at all. They got away, Sabu and got us later on, in their headquarters, which had formed for the Cardinals. The archival master says, yes, what do you expect from the Illuminati? That was a hell of a struggle, said Blue Zap. Is this what we're called to, Archival Master? And all the Cardinals looked at the Archival Master, who said they've opposed us before, the Illuminati, and now they oppose us again. This is your duty, Cardinals. Be ever vigilant. Be ever vigilant. War Games Part 8 Conclusion